what we're looking at is we're continuing this idea of um, events that are connected to other events. So complementary events, we know it's like this or that, and they sort of match up together like a pair. Multi-stage events are sort of like a version of that, but on steroids. Okay. So what we're talking about is situations like this. A coin is flipped three times. Right? Now, you're going to get out of there um, three results, and I include them all together as one event. So it's like one event, and it's got all these different parts in it. Stages, right? Flip it once, flip it twice, flip it three times. Okay? Now, the best tool you can use to help you understand these is a probability tree. Now, you've seen these before, but I want to remind you of what they look like. Okay? So if you haven't written down all these questions, then leave a bit of space. But I do want you to pick up your pens now and draw the tree I'm about to draw. A coin flip three times. When you flip it the first time, what's the total sample space? Heads or tails. Heads or tails, so the size is two. Right? So the way I'm going to represent that is to say heads or tails. And I'm going to represent them branching off, because you're getting one or the other. Right? So it's like this or this. Okay? You can't get both at the same time. But after you flip the first head or tail, in fact, you might like to label this part the first flip, you then flip again. You've got the next stage. Okay? So let's just imagine for a moment that that actually does not imagine. Who's got a coin? Because I don't think... Yeah, I don't know. Someone? Anyone? I've given all my... Everyone rushed. <laughs> Everyone's going to throw coins at me. Okay, thank you. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, with coins. Okay, so I'm going to flip this coin, right? Okay. It's heads, all right? So heads, let's imagine... This is what's happened, okay? So I'm not imagining. After I do this, I'm going to flip again, right? So again, there are two alternatives, right? It could be a head or a tail for the second flip. Okay, are you with me? But of course, we might not have gotten heads. There was a pretty even chance that I had gotten tails. So if this had happened instead, there's kind of like this alternate reality over here where I flipped tails instead, and it has its own set of outcomes that come along with it. Okay? So after two flips, there are four possible things that could have happened. I could have gotten two heads in a row. I could have gotten a head tail. I could have gotten a tail and then a head. Or both of them could have been tails. There are four distinct different outcomes. But I'm flipping it three times. right? So I'm going to do the third flip over here. And for each of these four outcomes, head, 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 tail, tail, head, tail, tail, I could get a head or a tail, a head or a tail. So I'm going to do all of these and I'm going to try my best to fit all of them. Okay. So you can see each of these branches off from one of the outcomes in the previous stage. So this is my probability tree diagram. Now I will point out, um, for this coin, um, I'm assuming it is fair, right? So the second one is going to be tails again, and heads again. So amazingly, I have three heads in a row, okay? But each time I flipped, there was going to be an even chance of one or the other. So that's why you can see none of these branches, they're not labeled, which I assume means it's always even, okay? But I could have a coin that's designed to flip on one side more than the other. So if I were, like, it's slightly suspicious that I got three heads in a row. Suppose it was twice as likely to get a head versus a tail. Think about that for a second. If it were twice as likely to get a head than a tail, it should be two thirds and one third, right? Don't write this because this is not actually the case. Well, at least I assume so, randomly. Um, I could write two thirds one third, which indicates, yeah, there's two outcomes, but they're not necessarily equal. There was a question you did earlier, I hope, which said, um, tomorrow it will either rain or not rain. Does that mean there's an even chance, a 50-50 chance of it raining or not raining? Because look, there's two outcomes. Two outcomes doesn't mean they're the same probability. If you're in a desert or if you're in a rainforest, the outcomes are going to be very, very differently probability, right? It's not a word, but anyway. Okay, so you can see if I want to, I can label these. I'm not going to because they're all even, right? Now, this thing here is going to really help us. Now, let's look at these questions, right? 
I want to list the sample space. Now, I can think of the sample space just off the top of my head if I want to, okay? But it becomes very hard to think about it in a systematic way and make sure I don't forget any. Thank you. So I'm going to use this probability tree and then over here on the right hand side, I'm going to list the sample space. Because every possible event that could happen is all here in my tree. I'm just going to follow the branches. So let's look at the one that actually happened by chance. I've got a head, and then a head, and then a head. So that is one of the options, right? If I just keep on going down, that'll produce a nice systematic list for me. Head, and then head, and then tail. What's this one? Head, tail, head. Head, tail, tail, and you get the idea. You can fill out all of them in this way. And the lovely thing about using the tree is you know you haven't missed any. There are eight possibilities, and they're all there. Okay.